Hey campers, this is Darren with My RV Works. Today we're in Port Angeles, Washington, and we're working on a furnace here. Uh, what do we got here? We got an Atwood uh, 8531, and uh, I'll bring you in closer. We can get that part number. But um, what the customer states is that this furnace is intermittent, and I've even confirmed this. On the inside, we'll turn the furnace on. Uh, the furnace will run, f and, and sometimes it works, and sometimes it doesn't work. And sometimes it'll work, and it'll blow itself out. So that's kind of strange. So let me take you on this journey and see if we can't figure out what's going on with this thing. So what we're going to do is I'm going to start this furnace up by plugging in the harness there. You'll see a green power light right there letting us know, okay, we have good 12 volts. What it's doing right now is it's pre-purge. He's going to run for about 15 seconds or so, give or take. Uh, these two wires right here going on the right side, that's my sail switch. And then the daisy chain, and they go into a high limit thermostat. Um, I've got other videos that go into more detail on those. So here I have my clicking sound. And I'm smelling that Ethelmer Captain smell really strong. That LP has no smell. They put that Ethelmer Captain in it. Uh, that gives it that uh, rotten egg, skunky smell. But we've, we're trying to ignite. Now... If I'm at this point on my furnace and I hear that ticking, I smell the gas, I know it's not anything on this side. In other words, I know it's not my sail switch. I know it's not my high limit thermostat. Because in order for the gas valve to open, the sail switch and the high limit thermostat need to be proven true. Okay, I need to get power through both of those. So I'm not looking at limit switches. I'm not looking at anything on that side once I hear the ticking sound. If I hear the ticking sound, my board is actually sending voltage through this wire, which is this black electrode looking knob thing on my control board. I'm sending 12 volts through this wire. I'm opening up my gas valve, but I'm not getting ignition, but I'm smelling gas. That's key. I'm smelling gas. So the fact that I'm smelling the gas tells me the gas valve's opening. So the control circuit of this is fine. We're looking at something that's not on the control side. So I don't think it's a control board because I'm getting ticking. Now, it could be my electrode gap is too great. We're going to be pulling this out. We'll look at the electrode gap. The electrode gap we're looking at is about an eighth of an inch. We'll show you that. Um, it could be my burner. Um, uh, I don't think there's anything wrong with this wire. If there was something wrong with the wire, I wouldn't hear the ticking sound. So I'm trying to um, impress upon you that if I'm smelling gas, if I'm hearing the ticking sound, the problem is not the control board, typically. The problem is not the sail switch. The problem is not the high limit thermostat. The problem is something on the burner side. I'm not able to create that ignition. Uh, uh, it could be my LP pressure is too low. Um, so knowing all these things, let's now take this apart and go inside. And we have to look at the burner at this point. Okay, so I'm going to turn this off. I'm going to asphyxiate myself with the LP smell. Um, now, I've already taken this wing nut off right here. And so this... The, there's a wing nut right here on the side that will pull this burner out. There we go. Okay. And uh, then let me get a flashlight for us. Inside of here, uh, let me, okay, there's going to be a screw up on top, a screw down here, and a screw right there. So three screws, one, two, three, three screws, and then you have to turn off your LP, disconnect this, and there's a plug that you unplug. And there's these little, let me show you. I've done all this already, but there's these, where are you at? There's these little things like this, okay, that you release. I'll show you the trick on how to put those, pull those out. You just squeeze them and they pull out. So once we get all these wires loose, there we go. Okay, I wanted to save us some time. So we've got our LP loose. My hands are frozen, so let me put a glove on here. This then should just pull right out. There we go. Okay, so it's coming on right out. You see that? And make sure my wires are loose. Okay, so here we go. Okay, now we get uh, everything loose there, and I see our problem. There's our problem right there. Do you see it? Okay, it's uh, this gas burner here. Um, it's cracked right there. So what's happening, and if we look, let me get my flashlight in there. We, we do not have an eighth of an inch gap. We have a zero gap, don't we? So we have a zero gap. That's supposed to be an eighth of an inch above that burner head. And we have a, uh, a burner that is not able to collect the gas and, I don't know, what would be the fancy $10 word there, disperse it so that when I shoot my spark, um, I have ignition. So the gas is escaping there. So basically, at this point, we need a new one of these things, don't we? Okay. So we need a new one of those. So at the end of the day, I think we're done with this video. I'll just wrap it up here because we've, we've found the culprit. Um, 
but I'll explain something here. This needs an eighth of an inch gap between the two prongs and above the surface of the burner, and the burner has that crack in it right there. So as gas is coming in here, it's, it's supposed to disperse nicely, but it's all coming out this side. Now, this furnace may have worked. Um, let me push down on this a little bit. Well, we can make this thing work by creating more of a gap right here, but the intermittency of this may have been because there may have been a small gap there, and now there's not. So anyway, at the end of the day, we replace this. So to replace this, you just take these two screws loose right there. Now, the key is we need to know the part number and the serial number of this furnace because these burner heads are not interchangeable. So we need to make sure we get the correct one for this furnace, okay? So let me go figure that out real quick and I'll share that in this video. So if you are watching this and you happen to have this furnace, you know what burner head you need. And let's tell you what we got here. We've got the, uh, there's a glare, 8531. Four, and then the serial number, well, that doesn't matter to you. But anyway, I want to make sure you see that. So, okay, so we've diagnosed the problem. We know what to do to fix it. Um, I don't have one of those burners in my inventory, so I'm going to get one on order. It might take a couple of days before we can get back here, but I didn't want them to go without heat. So, putting out a lot of heat right now. So, it's working, as you see. It's putting out a lot of heat. It feels really right. What I did to kind of bridge this gap, um, any port in a storm, right? So I figured, what's the worst case that's going to happen? So I created, I created a, a, a more of a gap. Remember how it was touching that gas burner? I created that gap. I put it back together, and it's working now. Um, now we're still going to get a new one in there. I'm going to order a new um, gas burner. I'm also going to order new electrodes because the one that was in there had a little bit of rust. So let's go ahead and get that fixed as well. Um, two twenty-dollar parts or in that neighborhood of price. Um, so I don't want to fix a burner and then have to worry about uh, coming back out here next year to fix the electrode. So if there's rust on it, let's do it now. And I've got a part number for you. Um, all of this series of furnaces, the 85, 8500-4, um, let's see, the part number is going to be a 36043. Uh, 36043 is the part number for the burner head. Um, I've just looked on Amazon, anywhere from 20 to 30 bucks is about what that part is. And like I said, it's very easy to change just two screws. So I hope that uh, this helped. So, but, and if it does help, make sure you thumb it up, subscribe. We make videos all the time on these service calls that I found myself on and um, share it with your friends and um, happy camper, say my RV works. So from Port Angeles, Washington, this is Darren signing off.